she's super interested. You want it? Come on. Oh, look at that. That was a beautiful strike. Now, this is a flat-nosed pit viper. She actually has a second fang coming in on the left side of her face. And it's pretty interesting because snakes, just like sharks, shed their fangs like a shark will shed its teeth. Yeah, you can see that second fang. She came out of that shed, now she can see. And she feels good. There we go, look how beautiful she is. That's a good looking King Cobra. Allison and Kevin head to head. Notice I'm real calm when he gets close to me like that. I'm just watching his body language. What is going on, beautiful people? Welcome back to my wildlife. I'm hanging out here with little Ziggy. And as you can see, Ziggy is getting bigger and bigger. And as she grows, she's getting a little more testy. Look at her. She's opening her mouth. She's going, I'm a crop and I'm here. You're going to mess with me. You're going to get some teeth, aren't you? So I got to be real careful with her. Make sure I don't upset her. At the end of the day, she's a wild animal and she could very well take the tip of my finger off, no problem. So she deserves the utmost respect. Ziggy is getting a little bit bigger and a little more testier. Let's see. Let's grab me like this and see if she'll relax. Oh, look at her belly. Yesterday she had a belly full of shrimp and rats and she's still digesting all that. As you can see from the base of her tail, it is fat as can be. And this is an indicator that this animal has a lot of fat reserves in this tail, which will be utilized in the future if she's ever in a survival situation in a drought or any kind of situation where she's not able to get food and keep getting that nutrients, that energy from her body. So reptiles like lizards, crocodilians store their energy in the base of their tail. So if they ever run out of food, they can live off these fatty reserves in the tail. They are the ultimate survivors, and she is basically an armored tank of a lizard. Look at her, she's a beast. I can't believe I don't think she's getting, look at her tail drooping over my shoulder like that. That is insane. Just a year and a half ago, or almost two years now, she was the size of a little gecko. Now look at her, she's become a two foot beast, maybe more than two foot. Look how big she is. Oh my God, I just love her so much. She's the best little crocodile. I'm blessed to be able to work with this animal. I love her so much. I'm so excited for 2021 because she's finally going to be in an outdoor enclosure. And then soon after that, we're going to be designing her new pond. And that's going to be an exciting future for Chandler's Wild World. Ziggy getting her own natural habitat. Kevin the King Cobra getting a big walk-in enclosure. And me, finally getting a house. <laughs> it's going to be fun. I can't wait. All right, we're going to put Ziggy back so she can digest her food because as you can see, her belly is oh so big. Oh my God. Sorry. She's my little baby. I can't stop. I, I, I have to embarrass you sometimes. I love you. Say hello to the beautiful people. Mm -hmm. Oh, she don't like the beautiful people at all. I'm sorry. Ziggy, be nice to the beautiful people. They subscribe. Please check us out on Patreon too. All right, guys. Let me close this up. And we are going to be going and checking out the snake house. We got some green anacondas to feed and also the king cobras have gone to the bathroom. And Justina has finally shed her skin. So I think we might give Justina a nice soak, clean up Kevin, and see what else is going on. So I will see you over there. All right, beautiful people, we're inside the snake house now, and this is the flat-nosed pit viper setup. Now, I have an extra chick, and I wanted to give it to the biggest flat-nosed pit viper in here, which is this big female. I've got three total, two smaller males, and this big female, but she's been needing a bigger meal because the other two males have been eating mouse fuzzies, whereas this girl needs something a little bit bigger, so we're gonna offer this chick, and I'm sure she's hungry. Let's see. Oh yeah, okay. She's super interested. You want it? Come on. Oh, look at that. That was a beautiful strike. Now, this is a flat-nosed pit viper. They're from Java, Indonesia. Now, this species, when it comes to its venom, is very similar to the green tree pit viper and some of the other trimester species. So if you're gonna get bitten by this animal, you need the same kind of anti-venom you'd be getting for the green tree pit viper. Although uh, it's not the deadliest of the vipers, it's still nasty enough to eat away your finger and cause disgusting necrosis, eating away your blood cells and flesh. You would not want that. So it's best to respect these snakes and their beautiful bioactive setups and enjoying them. Now, if you look, you'll notice we actually have a small male hanging out right here. Look at this. He looks a little bit hungry. We're gonna have to defrost some mouse fuzzies for him. We'll probably film that and put it on the Patreon page because we have a lot to feed and take care of today. If you look over here, you can see that beautiful mustard colored male right in the corner. 
These snakes have been doing fantastic. We've had them for months. And hopefully in the future, this beautiful female will be dropping babies. Now, she's not going to lay eggs. She's ovoviviris, which means she's going to drop clear sacs. And those babies are going to bust out of those sacs, ready to go and survive, just like the bush vipers. Guys, it looks like the flat-nosed pit viper is starting to work down that food. She might be trying to figure out if she can turn it around in her mouth and have that head facing down her throat. But there is a good chance that she might just try to eat it from the rump up. A lot of my snakes are known for doing that. She is such a beautiful pit viper. I'm so excited to see how her babies come out because all three of these snakes are completely different in coloration. So it's basically like a, like a big surprise when you get a bunch of babies similar to like eyelash vipers and bush vipers where they're polymorphic and the babies come out in an array of different colors. Sometimes not even looking similar to the parent itself. Now you guys can't see this, but I can see it. She actually has a second fang coming in on the left side of her face. And it's pretty interesting because snakes, just like sharks, shed their fangs like a shark will shed its teeth. So this snake actually has a second fang right behind the old fang, ready to pop in when that old fang pops out. So they're constantly going throughout fangs throughout their life. They might become damaged, chipped, in any way, shape, or form, and then they have a new fang ready to go. So you can see that back fang almost. Maybe you guys can't see it. Come from this angle, and you might be able to see that back fang riding right behind the main fang. And usually if that fang gets a little bit loose, it might end up getting swallowed going through the digestive tract, and then you're gonna find a fang in the fecal matter later on. So that's also what you gotta worry about when you're cleaning viper poop. You might end up having fangs inside the fecal matter. Yeah, you can see that second fang. Alright guys, we're going to come back to the flat-nosed pit viper in between feeding the green anacondas because she's going to take a little while. We're going to feed these cuties. They're getting big as can be. Both of my little females are growing like weeds. They can already pick up the scent from the chicken here. And they are definitely hungry. Let's get this little lady to get some food first. Do you want some? I remember when I first got these guys, they were so reluctant to eat, and now whenever they see food, they go and pursue it. This is awesome. Ready? Ready? Oh, wait, hey. Oh, there you go. Nice little side action. Typical of the anaconda, not giving any sign of essing up for a strike. They just whip around if anything touches the sides of them. Perfectly wrapped up. We got this one coming after us. Let's get the chick ready. Ready? Hey. Ready? Come on. Such a pretty snake. Come on. Oh, perfect. Beautiful, these guys are getting nice and big, developing nice big muscles. Grown like crazy. They just shed a week ago, and they've been shedding probably every couple weeks, which is great news. Alright guys, the flat nose pit viper is done with that meal. She's just working down the feet, so we're going to let her feet. We're going to lock up this enclosure, and we're going to go back to those green anacondas, because they're about to finish as well. Let me just lock this and secure it, because with every venomous reptile cage, we make sure that everything is secure and locked. That's what we're not venomous. Every enclosure is locked and secured, because here in the state of Florida, we got to follow by the rules. we got to make sure everything's nice and secure. These animals are not pets. This is all for educational use. This is for bringing awareness to different species around the plant, specifically reptiles, and so you guys can get a better understanding of how awesome these animals are and why they're important. So, just to clarify, this is not a room full of pets. These are educational ambassadors. I've been doing this since I was a little kid. I'm licensed by the state, just to let you guys know, because the last thing we need to do is give you guys the false message of a cobra or a gaboon viper or something like that being a pet that anyone can just get and keep inside their living room. It's all about working with these animals for a long period of time and I had to do a lot to prove I'm responsible to the state to even get the licenses to own a lot of these animals. So I take a lot of pride in being able to get to this point in my life and I can't wait to share with you guys in the future when we become a full-fledged wildlife park doing private tours for you guys, showing you guys these animals up close and personal. I, I spoke too much, now the green anaconda finishes food, but let's go check it out anyways. Looks like she's finished up with her meal. She's typically the one that finishes first, and look, she still looks hungry. She might, she might be in hunting mode. Oh, yeah, look at her, she wants more food. Look how curious she is right now. Look at her, look at her. All right, I'm gonna take my finger out. She's gonna try and chomp it. 
Her sibling over here is still trying to work out where that head is. So she's a little confused, but she'll work that meal out in no problem, in no time. What's up, dude? As you can see, the Colette snake has been making burrows throughout the Aspen, which is really good news, because that is typically what they're doing out in the wild of the heart of Queensland, living out in that rocky terrain, going throughout that soil, looking for food. If you guys aren't familiar with this snake, his name's Meatball. He is a Colette snake, only found in Australia, and one of the most toxic snakes on the planet. He has the ability to fry your sense of smell and taste for five years or even your whole life if you got a bad envenomation. And that's if you survive the bite, so yeah. Don't worry, they're really hard to find out in the wild and you probably never encounter one. For me, I think that would be a privilege. I think we need to get back to Australia as soon as possible, make it a mission to try and find one of these out in the wild with Ricky Mac from the Outback. Oh, I miss Ricky. I miss Ricky. Ricky! Love you, Ricky. Go check out Ricky's channel. He's a good homie of mine. He showed me around Australia last time I was out there. He's basically my brother from the Outback. I miss him most, so everyone here in America is a baby. They all wear shoes and, oh, I don't want to run after a six-foot monitor lizard out in the bush barefoot. Ricky would do it. <laughs> everyone in America is lame. They're not like Ricky. Speaking of Australians, look at Lacey. She had a big meal yesterday. She ate some quail eggs. She ate shrimp. And now she's basking right under the light. She's looking good. She's actually pushing three feet right now. And even Jack is a solid three feet long. Remember guys, we literally got these monitor lizards and they came with the eggs they popped out of. They were this big when we first got them. And they came out of these eggs. And look how massive these lizards have gotten in a matter of eight months or so. That is insane. They're right on track when it comes to their growth rate. They've been eating the perfect amount of food. They're not too thick. They're not too thin. Right. She she thinks her egg is her egg is food. She's looking at it. She's like, I remember that that capsule I came out of. I don't want to go back. We've got the female over here. You can see that big big prey item right in the belly. You gotta be super smooth with her and just redirect her over here so she doesn't bother her sibling. Don't bite me now. I'm not food. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Good girl. She needs to stay over there so she can give her sibling the opportunity to finish her meal. Because if not, she could potentially steal that meal and hurt her sibling while she's doing it. Oh, anacondas are just so cool. All right, guys, it looks like this green anaconda is finishing up its food, but we got the sister over here coming for that food again. I'm gonna put her right over there. And yes, I have Lacey out. What are you doing, Lacey? She's crawling around, taking her out for a little bit of enrichment, let her get out of the enclosure, get some exercise. She's getting big. Come here, where are you going? Come here. Don't be upset with me. Come here. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Look how big she's getting. Oh my goodness. Look at her. And as they get older, they will become more and more confident. <laughs> she's trying to become real confident right now, jumping on the camera. <laughs> She's, Ruth is like, ah! like, don't jump on my face. Her claws are as sharp as can be, and although she doesn't want to inflict any pain or wounds on you, just her walking around, she pierces those claws right through your butter-like skin. And unblue Ruth's face, oh no, Ruth! Yeah, she's getting real big. Look at her, she is such a little beast of a lace monitor. I'm so happy with her. And Jack is even bigger than her, so they're grown like crazy. I cannot wait to have these guys inside their own walk-in enclosure outdoors. The colors of these lizards are going to be popping more than ever, and also they're going to grow more than ever being outside in the Florida heat. They'll be cooking like crazy as if they're in Australia. It's always good to bring them out, hang out with them just for a little bit, let them know that everything's okay. Ready? Oh my goodness! You crazy lizard. All right, go bask. You want that job? Jackson is long. Look how big Jack's getting. Look at his tail. He's way bigger than Lacey. Look at you, dude. Coming out? Oh my goodness, your claws are freaking sharp. What's going on, dude? Sorry to just abruptly wake you up like that. Come on. It's okay. He's still got that jack o' lantern face. Relax. Relax. He's still got that jack o' lantern pattern right on the back of his face. Look at that. He is such a cool looking monitor lizard. I love him so much. And to see him grow from a tiny little gecko from where we first got him is insane. Dude, you're all over the place. Come here. Now, as these guys get bigger, 
they will become more confident. I'll be able to be inside the enclosure and they'll come to me to hang out. But right now, while they're at this size, naturally, they're in flight mode. But they're slowly becoming better and better. I'm able to hang out just for a bit. And hopefully, long enough before they jump off. Because they love to jump. Right? You guys are jumpers. I love that face. Modern day Velociraptor. Where are you going? You gonna steal that chick? No. That's not for you. Come here. That's not for you. Come here. No. As you can see, I'm starting to bleed a little bit. Everywhere where the claws touch me, it's just so easy for the claws to sink through your skin like a butter knife through butter. Alright, we're gonna let him go back to what he's doing. So let's not go back in the enclosure. Thanks for hanging out. You can see the tails that long alone. It's insane. I'm actually gonna change out this water while we have it open. And if you guys wanna roam, you can roam. We have the snake room doors locked right now, so if they wanna roam around, they can. I'm gonna go clean this water. And you guys enjoy these anacondas finishing their food. Alright guys, we've got the fresh water. Good to go. We're going to let these guys bask and enjoy themselves. Sweet! Anyways, so I'm going to lock up this enclosure. We're going to move on. Let me lock up these little green anacondas, and we're going to be taking care of Justina and Kevin, my beautiful King Cobras. Alright guys, I'm going to take this little female who's starting to come out, I'm going to stick her in her water bowl. This little lady finished her food as well, so let's get her in the water so she can hydrate. Perfection. Alright, now, let's get the glass back in the enclosure. Okie dokie, we are good to go, nice and locked. We got one chick left over, I'm going to get to my puffing snake later on, so I'm going to put this aside. And now, we're going to be cleaning Justina and Kevin. Let's start off with Justina, because Justina needs to get a nice soak. We have a can of water right over there, so we're going to be transferring her into the can of water. So she's already shed her skin, and she's looking really good. We just need to take her out and clean her enclosure. As you can see, she's very defensive right now. There we go. We gotta take out the shell. Get that mulch back in. Yoy! She's very defensive today. As you can see, we have almost a full shed. That's a really good chunk of shed right there. And we'll leave that aside for a fan of the show that wants to come and check out the Everglades Outpost. Come see the snake room, we'll give that to you as a gift. All right guys, let me just grab her by her coil right here. Boy, she's looking so beautiful. Look at her coloration. Before she was like a dark black coloration. And now, she's a beautiful light, light color. Almost beige looking, look at that. She's looking good. Oh, oh, oh. So she's looking really good. As you can see, she's been shedding like crazy. So she's got that new set of scales on her. She's looking good, really pretty. I can't get over her. She's getting big too. Look at, look at the size of her. I got her tail over here and she's going over there behind the snapping turtle. Let's get her into the can of water. Let's get a better grip on her. There we go. Uh oh, here we go. Relax. All right, guys, we're going to get her into the can. Let's go nice and smooth. There we go. There we go. Easy does it. Easy does it. Nice and secure. Good to go. <laughs> All right. Yeah, she's messing over here with this bubbler and it started making all this crazy noise. I'm like, what is that? So it was a little bit distracting, but we're good to go. You gotta keep your focus when dealing with a snake like this. It takes a split second to look the other way and you've got a fang in your finger and you're nearly dead. All right, it's a bit of a mess in here. We've got some broken up shed that didn't go with the whole entire shed. We're gonna be throwing all this stuff away. We've got a bit of fecal matter in there. And as you know, fecal matter is a, a very professional way of saying it, but hey, here we like to say something different, please. Everyone, come together. Let's say this together. What is this? Please, quick question. This is this is a true question. What is this? What is all this? Hmm? Hmm? Ooh. That's a spicy meatball! 
I needed to say it. It's my way of decompressing. I'm sorry. So we're going to be cleaning out this enclosure. It is gross. Let me get out the water bowl and we're going to move on to getting the, the new mulch in here. It's pretty gross. We're going to get to clean. All right. So let me start pulling out all this poop. We want to make sure it's nice and clean in here. It's been getting really spicy in here. And although she's a spicy woman, she does not need a spicy enclosure. All right, guys, we got some fresh water. Very nice. We're just about done cleaning out this enclosure. Let me just spread the mulch a little bit. All right, beautiful people. We are going to be putting back Justina. Let me just uh, move some stuff around, clear out the area, and we can take her out. She's been soaking here while I've been cleaning the enclosure, so I'm sure she's ready to go. So let's open this up. Hello. Hello, so beautiful. Hello. Oh, she came out of that shed. Now she can see. And she feels good. There we go. Look how beautiful she is. That's a good looking king cobra. All right, we're going to lift her body forward out of the can. There we go. Let her stretch for a second because this is the first time that she's come out of the enclosure in about two weeks or so. So she can stretch her coils, get some exercise, because she's been inside this six foot vision for a couple weeks and she hasn't had the opportunity to come out. So let me just move to this side. Hello. You guys can get a good look at her. Look how beautiful her coloration is that she shed. She was looking almost black before. She actually has a little bit of shed. Oh, relax. She has a little bit of shed right there that didn't come off yet. But that will come off with no problem now that she's been hydrated. So let's get her. There we go. Just a little bit of a stuck shed. Oh, hear her growl. She is such a beast of people. Relax. She was looking to turn on me for a second. Relax. Don't go after your tail. Leave your tail alone. All right, guys. We're gonna put Justina back in her enclosure. Relax. We gotta turn her the other way so she doesn't come back on me. There we go. We're going to put her right back in her enclosure and let her be. We know that Justina doesn't like to hang out too long. She's a very defensive snake. Not like Kevin at all. Kevin, you can hang out with him for a bit. Justina will take the opportunity to land a thing if she can, like she's doing right now. Relax. It's okay. It's okay. Right. Get your tail. Come on. Put your tail back in. All right. Come on. Back inside. Relax. Go back inside. She's getting very defensive with me right now. She's not too happy. Come on. Go ahead. She's literally flaring up her mouth like crazy. She is not messing around. You need to go back inside your enclosure, okay? Ooh, did you see that? She headbutted. There we go. I'm sorry, sweetie. I can't wait to see her in her new enclosure. I'm very excited to give them the opportunity to actually climb and move around more. So it's not just the once in a while when I clean their enclosure to let them out and stretch out. They'll be able to do that on their own all the time in their new enclosure. So that's something to really look forward to when we get these walk-in enclosures built. I want to have either, it's going to be hard to do real trees inside the enclosures unless I do it kind of like a greenhouse, but we're not going to be able to do it like that because we want it to be in a snake-proof room for the state to approve of our new venomous room. But it's gonna be really good to have some sort of artificial trees or some sort of platform to let her climb and actually stretch her muscles and utilize every muscle in their body that they be utilizing out in the wild versus just sitting in an enclosure or having basically a playground in your exhibit, being able to do what you want whenever you want, getting that exercise. So I'm super excited for that. They're fine in these enclosures because I do take them out and let them stretch. But I think the best thing I could possibly do is get those walk-in enclosures built. So next, what we're going to be doing is take care of big boy Kev. So basically, Kevin's been eating a lot, so he's really dark in coloration. I believe he's going to be shedding soon because of all those good meals that he's been having. It's been pushing him to grow more. And there we go. 
Uh, yeah, look how dark he is in coloration right now. That is a sign that he's going to be getting ready to shed soon. And although he's way bigger than Justina, I don't have to worry about him being as ballistic as Justina will be when I take him out. He's still a dangerous animal. He very well can land a bite. And you got to respect him. But he's definitely not as cantankerous or defensive as Justina. So we're going to actually let him soak as well. Oh, he's been getting big. So let's see. Let's get him into the can. Oh, come here. Oh, that's a lot of snake. Come here. Right into the water. Okay, nice and secure. He tried to get out on that side, but I locked him with the lid on and closed it. So we're good to go. And just in case, uh, since he's a bit bigger, let's get something heavy to put on top. <laughs> oh no, the Buddha. Broke the head a little bit. It's, it's fine, just a little chiropractor work. It won't... Okay, there we go. It's okay. All right, guys, let's clean this enclosure. He's got more feces in here because we fed him not long ago. Where's Justina? Actually had to skip her meal because in her shedding process, she decided she didn't want to eat. So we are going to get back to that momentarily. Oh, there's a lot of spiciness in this enclosure. We've definitely got a lot of clean to do. He's laid fat ones everywhere. Mamma mia, look at this one. This one just looks at me and says, come and get me. And I say, I will. Mm. Ooh, this one's got some mass to it. Oh, there's a fat one back here. Oh, this one just says, wet and wild. <sighs> I think some of it got in my mouth that time. <laughs> uh. <laughs> you know what this is? Come close. You cannot handle this. Please look, look down quick. You see, <laughs> you see, fresh. All right, all you cool cats and kittens, let's move this can off to the side. I'm going to be putting the glass back inside the enclosure so we can put Big Kev back. He's been having a nice soak, so he's been getting nice and hydrated. Let's move this statue. Oh my, oh my goodness. All right, guys. Let's take Big Kev out, get him back inside his enclosure. As you can see, he's right at the surface of the water. He was just drinking. He is noticeably darker than he was before, and that is because he's going through the shedding process. He's getting bigger. So let me actually use the hook just in case He's in a bit of a bad mood today. There we go. There's the big boy. Boy, look at you, dude. You're getting huge. Come here. Knock back there. Ugh. Look how big this guy is getting. It is always a pleasure to let him come out and stretch. Where are you going? What are you doing, huh? Okay. Right. I'm just petting him on the back of the hood and I'm keeping my body still. If I move too much, he'll probably get a little defensive and strike out. Because as you can see, he's window shopping, <laughs> checking out these puffing snakes. Obviously, the king cobra eats other snakes. They're the king of all snakes. So they see an arboreal snake species like a puffing snake. Even though it's not from the same continent, he will definitely make a meal of those snakes if he got the opportunity to. That's a snack for him. He eats snakes way bigger than a puffing snake. Last meal he had had to be like a six foot long Burmese python, so he has eaten plenty of big snakes. Look at you, dude. Such a beast of a king cobra. All right, we're gonna get him back. We're gonna get him back inside his enclosure. Say goodbye to the meatball clan. What are you doing? Where are you going, huh? Checking out Allison. He's like, I'm the king around here. Look, we're, we're checking each other out like this. They were just checking each other out. Allison and Kevin head to head. Notice I'm real calm when he gets close to me like that. I'm just watching his body language. 
making sure he's comfortable. All right, let's go back in size enclosure. Come on, big boy. Oh, you're getting too big. Grab him. Oh, so big. All right, you got a nice clean enclosure. Go ahead. There you go, big boy. Snakes are smart. They know where the safe zone's at. And they're always reluctant to have any kind of confrontation, even though King Cobras, it's okay. Even though King Cobras, Black Mambas, Taipans, all these snakes are reputable for being so dangerous, at the end of the day, they're always trying to get away from us. They never want to use their venom to hurt us. It is a waste of time. It is a waste of energy. It takes a long time to produce that venom, and that venom's for food. So obviously, I'm not on the menu. That's a snake that only eats other snakes and other reptiles. And for other snakes like mambas and taipans, it's the same thing. We're not on the menu. We're a waste of time. We're a threat. They just want to dart and get away. So that's always what you got to take away from these episodes. Although they're big and they're bad and they're venomous, at the end of the day, they're just living on the plant like the rest of us, trying to get their groceries and go home. All right, we're good to go. That's nice and locked. I'm going to get the visual barriers put up for my king cobras so they're nice and comfortable because they don't have a lot of places to hide in these enclosures, so I like to put up these little pillowcases on the half sides of the enclosure so they have their privacy, and if they want to see people, they can come to the other side. And now, they have their privacy, they can mind their own, do their thing, and we're good to go. So, I think that's gonna be it for this episode. If you guys have not checked us out on Patreon, definitely check us out on Patreon. We're doing all the extra content on that website, basically taking clips that we wouldn't put on this channel and putting them there. So if you're a dedicated fan and you want to help support the big goal of our facility and expanding the production of this channel and opening up more channels, then definitely help us support on Patreon and check out that content. You get exclusive merch and you get updates on what we're doing. So check us out on Patreon, Chandler's Wild Club. If you want to get your own merchandise, Chandler's Wildlife merch, check out Teespring, link below. We have all of our merch down there for sale. And also, enjoy yourselves, have a beautiful week, stay sexy, stay beautiful, and never forget, never forget. I forgot what we were talking about. Anyway, stay gangster. Little chiropractor work. Okay, there we go.